Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Life is a lot more about the journey than it is the destination. Did you hear me? Life is a lot more about the journey than it is the destination. Enjoy your journey. If there's any advice that I can give to anybody that has a dream in their heart to do something, it would be enjoy every step of the way. Don't be so caught up in where you're trying to get to that you miss the whole trip. Life is a lot more about the journey than it is the destination. Did you hear me? Life is a lot more about the journey than it is the destination. And some of you don't even know where you're going yet. You're just trying to find out, and that's okay too. I tell young people a lot of times, especially ones that are just about to get out of school, so many young people, everybody wants to know, what are you going to do with your life? Well, how many people really, when they're 15, know what they're going to do with their life? <laughs> I mean, I would have never thought this is what I would have been doing. I was a bookkeeper, I was a waitress, I was a credit manager, I was an office manager. I was a lot of things that didn't seem to have anything to do with being a preacher. But when the time came and God called me, I still had a long way to go. But all of those things that I had done, I got experience in some way, shape, or form that I'm able to use now. So if you don't know exactly what it is you're supposed to be doing, just start doing some things. One of the best ways to find out what you're supposed to do is to do a few things and you'll find out what fits and what doesn't. Like I tried working in the nursery at church and it took about two weekends and me and the kids both knew I was not a nursery worker. <laughs> Amen. That was definitely a dead work for me. That was works of the flesh. So. Dead works are works that don't work. Many times we have a dream from God, we get, we get ahead of God. It, it's God for us to do it, but we've got the wrong timing. I tell this story sometimes, but my stories always seem to fit into more than one message, so if you get tired of hearing the same ones, I'm sorry, you have to do what my husband does, he laughs anyway. <laughs> and uh, I tried to go on television before God put me on television. And so I, we rented a little studio in St. Louis and I took a few of my employees and I was gonna have a talk show. I was gonna ask them questions and they were gonna answer, but the problem was that I would ask the questions and then I would answer the questions too. <laughs> I, so I had a talk show, but I wouldn't let anybody talk but me. <laughs> and in six months, I got one piece of mail and it had no money in it. <laughs> six months. So. God did want me to be on television, but it wasn't time yet. It wasn't the right time. So even if you're out of God's timing, it becomes a dead work, a work of the flesh that doesn't work. So you might say, yeah, but sometimes you're just, it's just, you're just getting opposition from the devil. Yeah, sometimes you've got to push in and not give up and keep pushing things. But here's the way that I find out. There's certain things that if God doesn't do them, then I can't do what I'm doing. So let's just say this. I believe what God orders, he pays for. So I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing because God always pays the bills. And there's no way that we could do what we were doing if God didn't provide the finances that we need. There's certain things, like there's certain people we have to have to do what we're doing. And it continually amazes me the people that God provides, even in little things that it'd be too lengthy for me to get into trying to explain it to you. But if you're doing what God wants you to do, listen to me, he will provide everything that you need for you to do it. Come on. So that's the first thing I want to say to you is if you want to save yourself some time, just try to avoid works of the flesh. And you can 
If, if you pay attention, you, you can tell before, you might, you might have to step out and try, but you can tell when God's working with you and making something happen and when you just feel like you keep trying to push a dead horse up a hill. You know what they say, if the horse has been dead for 10 days, it's time to dismount. Okay. <laughs> Jeremiah 2.13 is a great scripture. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and they have carved out for their, their own cisterns, broken cisterns that can't hold water. A cistern is a well. So he said, there's two, two ways that you can make a mistake. Forget me, stop seeking me, and dig your own well and find out that it has no water in it. It kind of goes like this. Oh, that's, that's, that's what will make me happy. So you go try to do that and you're still not happy. Oh, well, it, this will do it. And so you dig that well and you're still not happy. We have to stop doing our own thing and take time to find out what God wants us to do. How many of you have a little bit of an idea of what I mean when I say get away from dead works? Okay, now, the second thing we'll talk about that's a big waste of time is good works that you do but they're done with a wrong motive. Motives are very important to God. As a matter of fact, I think why we do something is even more important than what we do. Let me say it again. Why we do something is even more important than what we do. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you start talking about motives, a room gets quiet. Because a lot of times we don't stop or get still long enough to actually say, why am I doing this? Am I doing this because I really believe God wants me to do it? Or am I doing it to, to be well thought of? Am I doing it to get in with the right crowd? Am I doing it because you want me to do it and I'm afraid that you won't like me anymore if I don't do what you want me to do? Am I doing this because I'm nosy and I don't want to miss out on something and not know what's going on? <laughs> hey, I've done that. Got involved in things that I didn't even want to do just because I didn't want something going on that I didn't know about. Come on, I'll tell the truth if you will. All right. Matthew 6, verse 1. Be very careful not to do your good works publicly in order to be seen. <laughs> you, know how, you know how hard it is to do something good in secret and keep your mouth shut about it? You know how hard it is even to pray for somebody and then see God do the thing that you prayed for, not to tell them, I prayed for that. <laughs> now, I'm not saying it's always wrong, but we don't always have to do that. Why not just let God get all the credit? Amen? Am I not right? Isn't it hard? Oh, I prayed for that. Well, maybe that's okay, but maybe God would rather you just keep quiet and let them think it was all Him. Otherwise, you'll have no reward. So this is scary. It says, if what you do, you're doing with a wrong motive, then you lose your reward. Altogether, you lose your reward. So whenever you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, don't blow a trumpet before you to advertise it, like the hypocrites do, like actors acting out a role in the synagogue and in the streets, so that they might be honored and recognized and praised by men. <laughs> Can I just throw this out? We still care way too much about what people think of us. We still spend way too much of our time trying to impress people. And we should be a lot less concerned with what people think and a lot more concerned with what God thinks. Amen. I think the greatest thing in the world would be to be completely free of what people thought. Amen. I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, you already have your reward in full. But when you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give in complete secrecy. 
One of the things that means to me, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, is if God does give me the grace to be involved in something really great, I find that I even need to be careful about going home and just reliving it over and over in my mind and thinking about how awesome it was. Because if we really believe that God did it through us, then we need to give him the credit for it and be very careful that we don't start thinking we're wonderful. Come on, because we did it. So that your charitable acts will be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. I love that. Whatever we do, God sees it and we don't have to blow a trumpet and announce it to everybody. God sees it and God is the only one that really can give us our true reward. And so whatever you're doing, if you're doing it with the motive of serving God and being a blessing to somebody, nobody has to know it but God, but your reward will come. What you do in secret, God will reward in the open. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray publicly, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, so that they may be seen by men. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, they have their reward in full already. And so it goes on and on and on, and there's many other scriptures like that, that what we do, we need to make sure that our motives are right. There are some scriptures in the Bible that tell us that on Judgment Day, all of our works will pass before the eyes of God, and only the ones that were pure works will be lasting. Everything else will get burned up in the fire. My, my, my. So I think it's kind of important that what we do, we do for the right reason. So homework assignment. I haven't given you a lot of homework this weekend, just a few things. But I would challenge you to go home, spend a little time, have a little meeting with yourself, and just think about all the things that you do, maybe committees you're on or things you're doing at church or things you do for other people, and just ask yourself, why am I doing this? And if you can't say one of two things, either God told me to do it or I'm doing it to be a blessing to someone, then maybe you need to rethink whether it's something you need to be doing or not. Because if you're doing it just to impress somebody, it's a waste of time because you get no reward. Are you out there? You get no reward. A story I can tell you that will make the point and then we can move on to something else. I was getting my nails done one day and was back when these big rhinestone Jesus pins were popular, and so I was wearing one, and there was a nurse getting her nails done by another girl there, and she had told me how pretty she thought it was, and then she said she worked in the cancer ward at a hospital and how hard it was to be around all these sick people and not, not be allowed by the hospital to talk to them about the Lord. So the idea came to my mind to give her that pen and just tell her that I felt like that there was power in that name and so just when people saw that name it would bless them and maybe give them some hope and so I kind of felt like that I should try to wait and see if I could do it privately and not make a big deal out of it but my flesh was having one thing to say about it and my spirit was having another my flesh was saying, get some attention. <laughs> My spirit was saying, do it secretly. Well, God arranged for me to have the place to myself with that woman alone for a few minutes. The girl that was working on my nails ran out of supplies. She had to go next door to the supply house and get some stuff to finish my nails. And the other girl that was working on her had gone somewhere too for a few minutes and so it was just me and her in there, and I had this little war going on in my soul. Should I just do this? I mean, I knew that God had set it up so I could do it privately. I knew that. But I finagled around and waited until they came back, and then I made a display out of doing it. Well, I felt like God told me to give this to you, and when you wear it, the people will see. I mean, and boy, then everybody just carried on about how generous I was and 
what a nice thing that was to do. And I just felt so good. My flesh felt so good. And when I walked out of the shop, I heard the Lord say, I hope you enjoyed that because that's all you get. I can make a point with one of my stories quicker than reading you 500 scriptures here. Jesus rebuked the hypocrites. Hypocrites are play actors. They're people who tell you what to do, but then they don't do it themselves. That's what happens when we become just religious. We've got a judgment and a criticism for everybody, but we don't look at our own self. I'll just read you a little bit of this in Matthew 23. Then Jesus spoke to the crowd and to his disciples and said, the scribes and Pharisees have seated themselves in Moses' chair of authority as teachers, so practice and observe everything they tell you, but do not do as they do, for they preach things, but do not practice them. There's nothing worse to me than somebody who preaches the word and is just a big phony I mean, if I stood up here and spent three days telling you how to treat people and how to be good to people, and then I left here and had a bad, smug attitude with the first person that did something I didn't like, then to be honest, God should just sit me down and I should never get in the pulpit again. Now, we all make mistakes. But boy, I'll tell you something. If you're going to tell other people what to do, you need to make sure that you're doing it yourself. Come on. One more, just a couple more scriptures and we're gonna go, go on to another area. The, the scribes and the Pharisees tie up heavy loads that are hard to bear and place them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not lift a finger to help them. See, that's the way religious people are. They'll tell you all the things you need to do, but they won't help you do them. Hmm, come on now. Okay, behave. The third thing that is a total waste of time is worry and reasoning. Trying to figure things out. You got anything in your life going on right now that you're trying to figure out? Can I tell you something? All you're gonna get is more and more confused. You can't reason out answers. Only God has the answers. And some things that go on in your life you'll never understand as long as you're on this earth. There are a lot of mysteries hidden in God. And instead of saying, why God, why? He wants to hear, God, I trust you. I don't understand why. You know, trust requires unanswered questions. We're all gonna have questions that are unanswered. You know, like for me, I mean, over the years, I've had a lot of attacks on my health. Not things that put me down, but just things that are irritating. You know, I mean, it, it's a corn or a bunion or a, <laughs> you know. Now I got a bone spur in the bottom of one of my heels. And then I went to the dentist the other day and he said, well, you need to, you know, you need to have like this five, $7,000 tooth made or something that's got to, going to take six months and you don't have the bone. So we got to implant bone and that takes six months and this takes six weeks and, you know, blah, blah, blah. My husband never has anything. <laughs> I mean, he just feels good all the time. Never says he's tired. Never has a bad mood. Never has a bad day. Gets up every morning singing. <laughs> yeah, he does. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. And then he starts singing me that song from Oklahoma, Poor Judd's Dead. And I just like... And he knows from me in the morning, I'm just like... Show me the coffee pot and keep quiet. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I'm not mean in the morning, but I, me and people don't mix well <laughs> in the morning. I need to see God before I see people. Amen. Trust me. And... You know, he just, I've just never seen anybody that just 
Nothing bothers him. Nothing. He doesn't care what people think. He don't care what they say. If we got problems, he's the same. If we don't have problems, he's the same. He always feels good. And to be honest, sometimes it just aggravates me. <laughs> Come on. I just think, okay, why do I have to always have something going on? <laughs> and you're just the happy-go-lucky, like he just had this cataract taken off his eyes. And somebody said, how's Dave? I said, well, of course, he's perfect. <laughs> the job was perfect. He can already see perfect. You know, it's just perfect. Well, if I would have had it done, there would have been something I can, you know, because, <laughs> you know, and, but you know, I don't know. I don't, and I'm not going on a digging expedition trying to find out. I did that for years. Well, why am I doing something wrong? Blah, 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 blah. No, the devil hates me. And so he tries to aggravate me every way that he can possibly aggravate me. Period, end of the conversation. But I have a great testimony. You know what it is? I'm still here. Yeah. Amen? And sometimes that may be all you can say is, well, I'm still here. I'm still breathing, and I still believe in Jesus. Amen? You can save yourself a lot of time and give yourself a lot of peace by just simply saying, I am not going to try to figure this out. When you get trapped in that mental realm and your brain just keeps going around and around and around and around. You know what the word worry actually means? I'm about to tell you as soon as I can find it here. to trouble, to fatigue, or to tear away. To harass, to trouble, to fatigue, or to tear away. Here's my definition. To torment your own self with useless thinking. <laughs> to rotate the mind around and around a situation searching for answers that never come to totally waste our time and to bear no good fruit. I don't, the only thing that I know to tell you that hopefully maybe will someday keep you from worrying or get you to give up at least some of it is it just doesn't do any good. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't make anything better, but it can make you sick. It can give you a headache. It can give you ulcers. It can keep you awake at night. It can make you tired. So I can tell you a lot of bad things it does, but I can't tell you one good thing that it does. Worry never changes anybody or anything. You know, we totally waste our time when we try to do what only God can do in our life. But when we trust Him to change whatever needs to be changed, even if we're the ones that need to be changed, He can then help us and our efforts will be fruitful, and His strength and peace allows us to enjoy the journey. Today, we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayer Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they have been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite a long, but they never go to a medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because 
they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel and you know. this event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two three months so the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously and that's what we are seeing that God's grace everything is going on smoothly <laughs> thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help you are, we are you making us to go every corner looking every place and without your support we cannot go Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek. Van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Werk, huishouden, vrije tijd en nog veel meer. Het moederschap is een fulltime uitdaging. Groeit alles je soms boven het hoofd? Krijg weer rust, zelfvertrouwen en vreugde die dieper gaat. Laat je inspireren door Joyce Meyer, zelf moeder van vier kinderen. Je hebt het verdiend. Het boek van Joyce Meyer, de zelfverzekerde moeder. Bestel je eigen exemplaar nu via joyce-meyer.nl of telefonisch via 026 2022 100. Vragen? Bel ons op. Wij zijn er voor je. Telefoonnummer 026 20 22 100.